children of all ages, welcome back to another edition of the Zeta Nation. To all my friends and family, fans and followers, thank you for joining us here for episode 51 of The Revolution. I am your host with the most, from the east to the west coast, Emperor Zeta. Coming to you, as always, from my favorite place in the world, the Fortress of Solitude here in Etobicoke, Ontario, Canada. Busy week last week, what with Wrestlemania going. Hope you guys enjoyed your Wrestlemania. And for the wrestling rant this week, I have a look at what the Zeta Nation Wrestlemania party was like. Full of commentary from the Empress, my cousin Lenny, Catherine, and myself. Other than that, it was a very quiet week. Don't forget, next week is our one year anniversary episode. So working hard on that, hoping to bring you guys a great show for next week. This week is a little light, but anyways, that is enough from me. Let's get on with the show. Rock and roll, baby. And here we go. He's sleeping better, not eating as often, which is a bonus. He's getting a lot more vocal. He's making really, really funny sounds and then trying to talk. Well, oh, and today he got his very, very first haircut by his sister, which I was not very happy about because he doesn't have that much hair to begin with. Oh, he loves to smile. This is awesome. He has such a great smile. And now he'll smile at like if you you look him if he knows you. I mean, and I can say good morning to him right away. I get a smile. He gets um, breastfeeding is less now. It's usually just in the morning, like a natural boob, and otherwise I pump and he gets in the bottle, which better for me because I can see what he's eating. He seems to be doing just fine with that. I think he's starting to get teeth. He's drooling like crazy, mowing down on his hand as if there's no tomorrow. Even like when he's full and this or that. First thing he does is puts his hand in his mouth and he's all drooly. Well, we'll see. But I think it's good. He starts eating. He's full time off the booth for sure. He's sleeping better through the night. Not through the night, but he's sleeping a little bit longer than just like you know, two hours and then up for eating. Well, so he went to bed at quarter to twelve and he didn't get up until about five or five thirty. Hopefully he'll be sleeping through the night very soon so that I can start sleeping through the night so without hearing screaming. Big smile for no, no, that's right.
Wrestling Rant is going to be a look at what went on at our house at Wrestlemania. We're going to show you Azita Nation Wrestlemania. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. And I'll be back next week for our one year anniversary extended Wrestling Rant. So it is Wrestlemania, we are here at the home of the Zeta Nation, here in Tobacco, Ontario, Canada. So this is our Wrestlemania crew for this week. We got Uncle Booger, Catherine and Anthony, Mummy all dressed up like punk, and Uncle Lenny over in the corner. And let's not forget the voice of the revolution, Big Papa Tony. So we got us some chicken wings, we got us some beer. Look, Cena versus Punk. So halfway through the night, and there have been a couple upsets. One title change, the Miz is one. So we've already seen the Shield win their match. We've seen Fandango, unfortunately, win his match. Ryback got squished by Mark Henry, and then still gave him a shell shock. And unfortunately, Ziggler did not win the first title of the night. Because if they let Swagger win that World Heavyweight Championship, I will... Well, I won't stop watching, but I will be very pissed off. I still can't believe the IC Championship match went on the pre-show, and the Funkadactyls match is getting on the actual pay-per-view. What a waste. And I got one more question. Where is Zack Ryder? I want to see Triple H get the crap out of Brock Lesnar. And, well, I don't really think you can make that face anymore. Uglier. So Del Rio retains the World Heavyweight Championship by making Jack Swagger tap out in probably the most boring match of the night. No reaction from the crowd whatsoever. Not even real any involvement from Coulter or Ricardo Rodriguez. It sucked. And Ziggler didn't even cash in again. So Ziggler walks away with no titles for the night and lo losing his match. I'm telling you, they need Zack Ryder on this pay-per-view. That is so awesome. The Undertaker has the best entrance in the history of wrestling. So I'm here with Anthony. We just finished watching the CM Punk Undertaker match, and Undertaker has gone 21 and 0. It was the show stealing match of the night for sure so far. Woo! <laughs> so I'm hoping Triple H and Lesnar is a war and there's blood everywhere. And I hope that The Rock and Cena don't disappoint because they better damn well put on a good show. Wicked, look at that entrance set from Triple H. That is so cool. Yeah, I don't that. Triple H saves his career. Career beats Brock down. Pettit greet him on the steel step. Brutal, beautiful contest. And Mr. Paul Heyman ate some delicious sweet chin music. Kind of funny though, both of Heyman's boys lost tonight, so it doesn't pay to be a Paul Heyman guy. Nobody ever thought this would happen. He's even got a baby bump already. Yeah. And now we have The Rock coming and making his entrance with the WWE Championship. And John Cena beats The Rock finally for the rematch and takes the WWE title. So John Cena is once again WWE Champion, unfortunately. At least they've gotten rid of the spinner belt and we don't have to see that crap. So I hope you guys enjoyed your WrestleMania. God knows I have. What a fantastic final match. And as I said they would, Punk and Taker stole the show. The rest of the card really wasn't that great. Wasn't too impressed. And it seems they dropped the 8th person tag from the show. We go to WrestleMania. I'm glad Cena took it. And I'm glad Punk lost to the Undertaker. It was good show. It was a oh. lot of action-packed fighting, you know? I mean, this is the match everybody wanted to see. <laughs> Come on, I want to see a Hulk Hogan War Ultimate Warrior WrestleMania 6 style handshake. Oh. Now that's what you like to see. Post-script to WrestleMania, the next night on Monday Night Raw, we finally got to see Dolph Ziggler cash in his Money in the Bank briefcase to become the new World Heavyweight Champion. It's been a long time coming, they should have let him have it so he could have his WrestleMania moment. But at least the belt is off, 
How about a little doll boring? How come the blowing gum? A koala is going to be in here. A koala is going to be in here. We're making a milkshake for me. We're playing banana milkshake. Mm, the ice cream is so yummy. I'm going to put the banana in. Let me get the frog and the frog. Mm, that's a frog. Banana. That's the egg. Like that is wrong. You like the wrong cake too, Jim. Too, Papa? Look what Max did. He broke the eggs. Yay! And now he's doing the picture. Now he brought them up. And now he's built a flower. And now he's doing another picture. Oh, wow. We're just like making a cake. And Max took some ice cream. Ventures on the wrong cake. Yeah, cool. It's good. No way. No way, give it to me. I think we go to the Disney store. And no way, was there. And the first key is in the old room. It's gross. No, yeah, gross. Why you make fox? Why you make fox? Yeah, gross. That's right, it's our comic book day. We are here on the aftermath of WrestleMania. It was a great show, but now we are headed down to Excalibur Comics. We're gonna to talk to Fred, we're gonna to talk to Rob, find out what the expert and the prophet have to say. Where are we going, Kat? To Rob! So, we're headed down there, find out what the boys want to talk to us about this week, and we will... See you soon, people! See you soon, people! I think so. So as you can see, we have the steps of doom back here again today. I'm stuck with the stroller, bringing it up as always because Magda just doesn't want to. So we're headed up the steps of doom now. I'm telling you, Rob needs to get an escalator. This is gonna give me a hernia. I swear to God, this is just gonna give me a hernia. This is Excalibur Comics, 3030 Blur Street West, upstairs, above. The Kingsway Theater. I heard WrestleMania wasn't that good. Well, today I just want to mention who passed away. Uh, Kamen Infantino was 87. Uh, Kamen is best known uh, for basic Silver Age Flash. He was the art for the uh, the first part of the Flash's career and stuff. And, uh, a lot of uh, material that he did. Also, to uh, Adam Strange was another character he uh, co-created, you can say, basically, which was also quite good. He was also editor-in-chief at DC Comic Books. Uh, thanks to him, uh, Kirby had his fourth world. He created uh, went over to DC and create the fourth world. Well, now, basically, DC has one of the greatest villains, is Dark Side. So we have him thanks to, to Kamen on Fatima's work and stuff. Uh, I also want to say that I'm surprised that Inner Space actually mentioned his passing because for the most part, a lot of times, those guys don't mention some talented artists are passing away. So a very talented man, and it's a pity he's gone, but he has a great legacy, and that is his work on Flash and Adam Strange.
on to the comic book for today. It was a Wolverine by Alan Davis. Alan Davis is one of the good artists in comics. The man's uh, been influenced by Neil Adams, and you can tell by the beautiful artwork that the man does. He's on for four issues, and believe me, this is four great issues that Wolverine is going to be out. Hawkeye, the, one of the better $2.99 books that Marvel has, and believe me, there's not too many $2.99 books that they have that's worth picking up, but this is one of them. Hawkeye is a great, fun book. If you enjoy just having a fun time, just read the, the Hawkeyes. They're, they're, they're re really well done. Age of Ultron. <laughs> Good old Brian Hitch. He's doing a great job as artist on the book now. This is the last issue. Bra Brandon Peterson will be doing the uh, from issue 6 to 10. Written by uh, Bendis, so I know there's a twist coming up, and we all know there's a twist in the Age of Ultron, so there's a little surprise. Over, you know, we are all aware of what's going to happen, right? Because we all know that this this storyline is not real in the sense of the Marvel Universe, because I don't think they'll be doing what they're doing now. The other book, of course, Uncanny Avengers. Danny Ekua is a, a very talented man, his artwork is very nice, so... And again, it's another Avenger book, and it's by uh, Jonathan Hickman. This is uh, the uh, White Event. Not too many people remember the, the new universe, but there was basically a character called Star Brandon to kind of bring the character over into the Marvel Universe. So this, I think I find this a lot, a lot and very interesting. So, and that's for the most part the stuff that I would recommend to you. I was reading a book a customer gave me called The Rise of the Fourth Reich. And in the book by Jim Mars, there was, he was talking about how people who funded Hitler and created him into power, they're still alive and well today. They also were the ones who created uh, communism in uh, Russia and communism in China. So they create all the different sides to create tension and bring about law and, and control over the people, different areas. It's almost like your, your National Hockey League where you have different teams and uh, you all see Montreal fighting Toronto, very intense game, you know. It's the same kind of game the Illuminati sort of plays. Uh, they create all sides. Uh, Trotsky was coming through Canada with oodles of money after staying at the Rockefellers and he got stopped at the Kenyan border with all this kind of money uh, on him and then Halifax going towards uh, Russia and he was put in jail but a phone call from the President of the United States Levin, was released, uh, Trotsky was released and he went and financed the Russian Revolution with uh, the Rockefeller money. The same with Mao. Mao came out of the, the universities that were created by the Skull and Bone. Yale University, those, those guys were the ones who indoctrinated Mao and he became the, the leader in, in China. The secret societies create all these, uh, what you call groups or, or uh, revolutionaries. In fact, I think, personally, in my, in my opinion, after looking at all these so-called Canadians going out in uh, different parts uh, creating terrorism, they've all been created and, and indoctrinated here, really. Why is Canada letting all these people in? I think it's basically to train them. Why didn't Toronto or Canada became a target of uh, Al-Qaeda? I believe the Illuminati wants places like Toronto and so forth to harbor terrorists and, and to, to breathe it, to expand it, I think. Every country that, that went against Bin Laden has been bombed or, or, or uh, something happened, except Canada. I think it's also Toronto is one of the biggest Illuminati uh, cities. You look at the big uh, CN Tower and the Sky Dome, they represent what the Illuminati always put in the, in the front of everybody to worship. Uh, the obelisk would be the CN Tower, and the female counterpart would be the Sky Dome. Well, that is it for this week's episode. Thank you for joining us for another episode of The Revolution that is the Zeta Nation. Come back again next week for our very special one-year anniversary episode right here on YouTube. Go back and check out all of my other episodes right here on YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel, One Word, Emperor Zeta, right here on YouTube. Pick up your Drop Dead Pinups Electric Knight CD, find them on iTunes, and follow them on Twitter at Drop Dead. Pinups. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Emperor Zeta. Head down to Excalibur Comics for all of your comic book related needs. Did you guys come here to see WCW or did you guys come to see the Zeta Nation? Score one and more for the bad guys.